السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To carry on with the general anatomy lectures I'm gonna discuss in this presentation The functional anatomy of the nervous system I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh Professor and Head of Anatomy Department at Mansoura University, Egypt The objectives of my presentation are First, I'm gonna discuss the basic structure of the nervous system which is formed mainly of two main cells, the neurons and the glial cells. Also, we will discuss the anatomical classification of the nervous system and the functional classification of the nervous system and finally mention some definitions. To know the organization of the nervous system, let's ask ourselves first, what is the function of the nervous system? Well. It is the master that controls and communicates all the systems of the body together. Next, we need to know how can nervous system carry out this role. It does so through three steps. First, it needs sensory input or information. Then, it integrates this information and then come out with a decision through the motor output. The information reaches the brain through sensory receptor which detects stimuli both from inside and outside the body. Then the nervous system interprets and processes this sensory input and takes a decision about what should be done at each moment. Finally, it gives a response by activating muscles or glands, as we can see in the common example. Here in this example, you can see that the rat first saw the cat and then integrated this information in his brain and understanding that this is a dangerous creature, so he gave a response by fleeing away from the cat. The nerve cell or the neuron is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system. It is a specialized cell for transmission of nerve impulses. Each neuron is composed of a cell body, we call it soma, and many extensions called neuron processes. They are divided into dendrites and axons. If we compare between the dendrites and the axon, the dendrites are many per neuron while we have only one axon per neuron. The dendrites are short and branched, while the axon is long and thin. The dendrites are the receptive portion of a neuron, while the axon is the transmitter portion of a neuron. The dendrites carry impulses towards the cell body, while the axon carry impulses away from the cell body. The dendrites are not myelinated, there is no myelin sheath around them, while the axon can have myelin sheath around them. The other element that forms uh, the nervous system is the supporting cells or the neuroglial cells. These are accessory cells, they are also known as nerve glue, that provide physiological support, protect and insulate neurons in the central nervous system and also in the peripheral nervous system. As we can see here, this is one of the neuroglial cells at the peripheral nervous system. It's called the Schwann cell. You can see that how they wrap around uh, the peripheral nerve in many rounds like this. And form many layers that surround the axon and form the myelin sheath of the peripheral nervous system. In this example, you can see uh, one of the neuroglial cells inside the central nervous system. It's called oligodendroglial cells. They send their process around the axon of the central nervous system and wrap around it in many layers and form the myelin sheath inside the CNS. In the average person, there are 10 times neuroglial cells more than the neurons in our brain. In some people, like Einstein, for example, this ratio is much more. For the anatomical classification of the nervous system, we divide it into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system lies inside the axial skeleton. Inside the skull, we have the brain, 
and inside the vertebral column we have the spinal cord. While the peripheral nervous system is formed of the nerves that come out of the brain as the cranial nerves, there are 12 pairs, and the nerves that come out of the spinal cord, we have 31 pairs. The central nervous system is the center of integration of information and the control. It consists of the brain and the spinal cord, which lies inside the skull and the vertebral canal. And covered with meninges, we have the dura matter is the outer layer, the arachnoid matter is the middle layer, and the pear matter is the innermost layer. The brain lies within the skull, formed of the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brain stem, which is formed of midbrain, pons, and medulla. The spinal cord lies in the upper two-thirds of the vertebral canal, continuous above with the medulla, and consists of outer white matter and inner gray matter. The white matter contains the myelinated nerve fibers, while the gray matter contains the nerve cells and the dendrites. The spinal cord provides a two-way conduction pathways to and from the brain and also it is a major reflex center and gives exit to 31 pairs of spinal nerves. We can see the meningeal coverings in this diagram. The outer layer is formed of the dura matter, the middle layer formed by the arachnoid matter, and the most inner layer which is adherent or close to the spinal cord is formed uh, by the pear matter. These layers of the meninges cover and protect both the brain and the spinal cord. The space between the arachnoid matter and pear matter is called the subarachnoid space. It contains fluid, which is called the cerebrospinal fluid. The peripheral nervous system, as I mentioned uh, now, it's formed of 12 pairs of cranial nerves. They carry information to and from the brain. By this, we mean that they carry sensory information to the brain and also carry motor information from the brain. The spinal nerves are 31 pairs. They also carry information to and from the spinal cord. For the spinal nerves, we have two roots for each spinal nerve. One is called the ventral root and the other one is called the dorsal root. The ventral root is motor and the dorsal root is sensory. Thus, the spinal nerve is a mixed nerve, contains both sensory and motor nerve fibers. The spinal nerve leaves or exits the vertebral canal through the intervertebral foramen and then splits or gives a dorsal ramus and a ventral ramus. The dorsal ramus contains mixed nerve fibers and supplies the skin and the muscles of the back while the ventral ramus contains mixed nerve fibers and supplies the skin and muscle of the anterolateral part of the body. To summarize this, the central nervous system is formed uh, of the brain and the spinal cord, while the peripheral nervous system is formed uh, of the cranial and spinal nerves. The cranial and spinal nerves carry sensory input or sensory information towards the brain and spinal cord where integration of this information takes place then it gives motor output carried by the cranial and spinal nerves to the effector organs and to summarize again the division of the nervous system we have anatomical classification we divide it into central nervous system formed of the brain and spinal cord and peripheral nervous system formed of the cranial and spinal nerves. Functionally, we divide the peripheral nervous system into voluntary port or the somatic nervous system and involuntary port or the visceral nervous system or the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is further divided into sympathetic port and parasympathetic port. The sympathetic nervous system its function, we can summarize it into fight or flight. We will remember it by the four E's. It's used in exercise, excitement, 
emergency, and embarrassment. While the parasympathetic part of the autonomic nervous system, we can summarize its function into rest and digest. We can remember its function by the three Ds. It's used in digestion, defecation, and diuresis. In this table, we can compare the sympathetic nervous system versus the parasympathetic nervous system regarding their effect on the eye, heart rate, blood pressure, bronchi, GIT secretion, prestalysis, adrenaline secretion, and bladder function. For the eye, the sympathetic effect is dilatation of the pupil, while the parasympathetic is constriction. For the heart rate, the sympathetic effect is to increase the heart rate, while the parasympathetic is to decrease it. Also for the blood pressure, the sympathetic stimulation increases the blood pressure, while the parasympathetic decreases it. The sympathetic effect uh, on the bronchi, it causes their dilatation, while the parasympathetic causes their constriction or spasm. For the GIT secretion, the sympathetic stimulation inhibits the GIT secretion, while the parasympathetic stimulation stimulates it. Also, the sympathetic system inhibits the prestalysis or the movement of the GIT, while the parasympathetic supply stimulated. The sympathetic stimulation helps in adrenaline to be released, while the parasympathetic system inhibits. For the bladder wall, the sympathetic fibers relaxes the bladder and constricts the sphincter, while the opposite occurs in the parasympathetic stimulation, it contracts uh, the wall of the bladder and relaxes the sphincter, so helps in diuresis. Let's now move to some definitions. Gray matter means the area that contains the cell bodies and the unmyelinated nerve fibers inside the central nervous system. While the white matter is the area that contains the myelinated fibers inside the central nervous system. Nucleus means collection of cell bodies inside the central nervous system. So you can see an area of gray matter within the white matter of the brain section here. Ganglia means collection of cell bodies outside the central nervous system as the dorsal root ganglia, which lies on the dorsal root of the spinal nerve. Tract means myelinated nerve fibers inside the central nervous system. As we can see here in the spinal cord, the white matter is formed of tracts, which either ascend upward to the brain or descend from the brain downward. Nerve is the myelinated nerve fibers in the peripheral nervous system. So both tract and nerve are myelinated nerve fibers, but the tract is found inside the central nervous system, while the nerve lies within the peripheral nervous system. Also, we have sensory or afferent fibers. These are the fibers that carry information to the central nervous system from the sense organs, while Motor or efferent fibers, these are the fibers that carry information away from the central nervous system. The word somatic or soma means body, so by it we mean the skin and the skeletal muscles that are connected by sensory or motor fibers to the uh, central nervous system. While visceral means our viscera or organs. Visceral fibers connect the internal organs with the central nervous system. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know if I upload another video.